I Go to Sing by Lindy Thompson. I might be exhausted and the children might be cranky, but I will be going to church on Sunday. Don't know who's preaching, doesn't matter. The sermon may be helpful or not, holds my attention or doesn't. It's the singing. I go to sing. I get up, get cleaned, get dressed, possibly get mad at not ready kids and an empty coffee pot and traffic. I get going, get there, get seated, get comfortable, get focused, and when the music starts, get saved. It's the singing. I go to sing. It's the willingness to stand if you are able, the common agreement on page number, the voluntary sharing of songbooks with people on your row, even the ones you rode there with. But most of all, it's the collective in-breath before the first sound is made, the collective drawing upon the grace of God, the collective, if inadvertent, admission that we are all human, all fragile, all in need of the sustaining air freely dispensed, and all in need of each other to get the key right and not sound discordant. It's the hidden life celebration in the act of making a joyful noise all together. We don't even have to sound that good. Singing together still brings home the we-ness of worship, the, the not-aloneness of life in God, the best of all we have to offer each other. When we are singing, I think that I might actually be able to forgive you for being so terribly human, and you might be able to forgive me for being so terribly not there yet. And we might be able to find peace now, not postpone it for some heavenly hereafter. But live and breathe it today, drawing in the grace of God, voicing out our need and hope and gratitude and longing. When we are singing, I can feel the better world coming. And if I get to be part of it, you do too. So sing with me, and we'll make our way down that blessed road together, collectively better than we ever thought possible.
thank you guys so much. <laughs> Beautiful. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us sing. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I encourage that. Again, to come up this morning for our children's lesson. I brought, uh, we can have a seat right down here. I, I've, got, um, I've got my map out. This is, I'm old school, right? So if we're going to figure out where we're going, we need, we need a map. I know a lot of people get on their phones and kind of use the GPS, but I'm old school. I like the map. So if we're going to figure out how to get from my house to the church, let's see. We've got to find my house first, right? This is a map of Ohio. That's going to be a problem. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's not going to work. So... Flip it. Maybe there's a different state on the back. Let's see. There's Toledo. That might be a little far from Champaign. Hmm. This, Ohio's a game? I don't know that I knew that. We'll have to play that game sometime. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out. So It's a pretty crazy game. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So you, oh, you're seeing circles? Maybe you should bring that game with us to uh, our game night on Friday. So one of the problems we're going to have, if I was on your iPad, yeah, YouTube kids, there you go. Well, I think we're going to have a problem finding my house if we got the wrong map. So first thing we got to do is we got we to get the right map, right? We got to figure out 
who to follow to get from one place to another. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness. Have you have you ever have you ever been lost before? Have you gotten lost trying to find find your way somewhere? One time, yeah. I think sometimes we need to we need to follow somebody who knows where they're going, right? And so that's kind of part of our lesson this morning is we're going to hear a reading where the disciples are getting worried because Jesus is talking about leaving them, and they're like, "Well, how are we going to know where to go?" And he says, "I'm the way, the truth, and the life." And we hear that a lot. We hear a lot of Christians use that phrase, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, right? But the way to what? Or to who? Right? Whenever we're trying to figure out the way, you know what we do as Christians? There is holes in my map. I know. That's going to be a problem. We'll fall through Ohio there. So whenever we're looking for the way, right, we look to Jesus, right? Yeah. So if we're confused about where we're going or what we're supposed to be doing, our, our role as Christians is we look to Jesus, right? And if we're confused about what's true and what's not true, we look to Jesus. And if we're wondering about where to find life, guess who we look to? Jesus. You got it. You see all the pattern there, right? Yeah, it was kind of a pattern there. So whenever we're confused about you know, what we're supposed to be doing or where we're supposed to be going or what's true and what's not true, we always look to Jesus. And that's why it's important to come here and hear about Jesus and hear stories about Jesus and, and follow the things that Jesus did and, and live those out. Mm-hmm. Here's what we'll do. How about, uh, yeah, we're never going to find my house on this map. So you've got to have the right leader. You've got to have the right guide. And so whenever we get lost, that's what. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Well, how about this? I think what I'll have you do, I'll have you hold this corner of the map. You hold that corner of the map. You hold that corner. And then we're going to pray here that God guides us, okay? All right, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, Lord, for Jesus. We thank you that Jesus is the way to you. If we want to know what you're like, Lord, we look to Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus is the truth. If we want to know what's true in this world, we look to Christ. And if we want to know where to find life, we thank you, Lord, that you've given us Jesus so that we can look to Jesus and find life. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming up, gentlemen. Appreciate it. You found Springfield. Oh, yeah. I think there's one in every state, right? There's a lot of, a lot of Springfields.
Our reading for this morning is from 1 Peter, found in the second chapter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Because it's Music Sunday, we're going to do this a little bit differently this morning. Um, our sermon is actually going to take place part, and um, parts of the sermon will be different parts of hymns. So um, I'm going to start, though, by going back a little bit. Um, through the Easter season this year, uh, we have encountered, and we will yet encounter, several I am statements from Jesus. Last week we heard Jesus say, I am the gate for the sheep. This week, Jesus tells the disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Over the centuries, Christians have heard that statement in different ways. Sometimes we have emphasized the word the, the, making Jesus' words sound threatening, I think. I am the way, the truth, the life. You can only get to God through me. I call this the believe or else approach. (laughs) Um, And it's a very narrow interpretation. But others have heard this same statement as a promise, as an assurance, that in a world of many ways and many truths and much death, here is a promise of direction and honesty and life. The words then become a gift, an invitation, a statement of grace, Here, in these words, Jesus offers us a clear and loving path. Jesus brings us together in a central truth, a hope that unites us. And Jesus offers us the healing balm that brings new life. Our first hymn for our sermon and song this morning explores those ideas. 
It's a hymn from Japan, written not long after the end of the Second World War by a man who lived through that war. And as we sing, hear the hope and the longing for a brighter future through Jesus, our way, our truth, and our light. It's number 530 in your hymnals. Um, and again, it's from Japan. Hear, O oh Lord, your servants gather. image on the screen is a church in Tokyo, by the way. Jesus is our way, our truth, and our life. Jesus as our way, our truth, and our life is not as vivid an image as Jesus, the light of the world, or Jesus, the good shepherd. It's not quite as many pictures that come to mind when we think of way and truth and life. However, the idea does lend itself very well to poetry. One of my favorite ways of hearing this scripture, this statement, this I am statement of Jesus, comes, comes from a collaboration of the English poet George Herbert and the famous English composer Rafe Vaughan Williams. We're going to sing just the first and last verse of this next hymn. But listen as we sing to the way the poetry of the words and the poetry of the music both mesh into something even more profound.
whatever way we hear this gospel text, it's a threat, a promise, a poem, a hope, the central message is that Christ provides for us in this life and in the next. Jesus gives us the promise of eternal life as a free gift. We don't have to work, uh, to work out the way to God for ourselves. Jesus makes the way for us through the cross. A final hymn during this sermon time is a favorite hymn of many people, Rock of Ages. This hymn is all about the grace and love of God, reminding us that we can't get salvation for ourselves. No amount of work, no amount of passion, no amount of sorrow can get us closer to God. It is God who saves, and God alone. Let us sing. I invite you now to stand as we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Another quote from Martin Luther. Um, beautiful music is the art of the prophets that can calm the agitations of the soul. It is one of the most magnificent and delightful presents God has given us. As we come before God in prayer, we think about the agitations of this world, the agitations of our soul. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of life. Strengthen your church to proclaim your praise at all times. As we celebrate the gift of music today, we give thanks for musicians and vocalists, choir members and bell ringers, Sunday school songs and families who make music together. Bless the music ministry of this congregation in all its many forms, 
and inspire us through music to share your love in new ways. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, you show your steadfast love through the mighty waters, towering mountains, verdant fields, and arid deserts. Protect the Earth's diverse habitats from the forces of pollution, erosion, extinction, and global warming. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, your spirit guides us into all truth. Give wisdom to the world and local leaders and organizations as they begin, build, or renew relationships. Strengthen leaders and aid organizations in areas needing to be rebuilt following conflict, unrest, or natural disaster. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you make your home among us. Abide with refugees, those experiencing homelessness, those fleeing war and poverty, and all who question if there is a home in your heart. We pray for all who are sick, including Amy, Angie, Carol, Aaron, Evan, Sean, John K, Lou, Marilyn D, Marilyn K, Rick, Ursula, and those we name before you now. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Assuring God, you accompany your people amid uncertainty and change. Uphold people in this community who have recently moved, changed jobs, or schools, retired, or are going through transitions of any kind. Lead us in your ways. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Renewing God, you gather the saints at your heavenly banquet. We give you thanks for the care shown us by those who have gone before us, especially Mary and Zick and Bertie Nelson. Grant confidence and comfort for all waiting the place you have prepared. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. We share the peace of Christ with one another. As we um, gather the choir up here, um, we also remind you that uh, offerings are being taken right now mostly online, but if you wish to leave an offering in the plate out in the narthex, it will be right outside the door as you leave this morning. Thank you so much for the ways in which your generosity supports Good Shepherd, and today especially for the ways in which your generosity supports music at Good Shepherd and worship and all that we do and sing in praise of God each Sunday.
let us pray. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of the bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You are holy, gracious, and merciful God. Everything is filled with your glory. We give you thanks for your promise and presence, which have sustained the faithful in this and every generation. Above all, we give you thanks for Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice, reconciliation, and peace. On the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread, and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and his ascension. We pray for his coming again, even as we cry, Amen, Amen. come Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all of your promises may come to us and your whole creation. Amen, Amen. come Holy Spirit. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our friend. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, now and forever. Amen. Make us bold, O merciful God, to address you as our Abba, as we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. Amen. You may be seated. New assistants can come forward. As always, all are welcome to receive the sacrament this day.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you have sent your son to us, and now we send these gifts out. Signs of your son's love, parts of your son's body and blood given. Uh, evidence of your grace for those who will receive. Good and gracious God, go with these servants who bring your sacrament to those in need. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Either way, it works. <laughs> Amen. Amen. At this point, um, uh, a couple announcements, a uh, couple things going on in the life of our congregation. Uh, today we have a cross-gen gathering down in our fellowship hall. We will be um, celebrating the Holy Spirit. And um, the room is awesome. If you haven't uh, gotten a chance to see it yet, well, you're in for a treat. But um, I think if the lesson is as amazing as the room looks, um, we are in, all in for a treat. But that is um, CrossGen. Everybody's welcome to come down and join us for coffee and, and donuts and um, a time together of learning and fun. And uh, we're going to be doing that once a month uh, again next year, starting in September. But this is our final one for this kind of season. Cross Gen, 1015, it's down there. Uh, also today, church picnic. I think, I'm looking for my leaders right now. I think, um, yes, we're still at the park. Looks like the weather's gonna hold. Weather's gonna hold, hopefully everything cleans up. Just wear, you know, waterproof shoes and maybe bring a rag with you. But, uh, <laughs> but in any case, we'll just wipe things off. But uh, lots of fun church picnic today, um, following Sunday school down at Dana Colbert Park. Um, there's food is going to be provided. If you don't like the food that's provided, you're welcome to bring your own. Um, but uh, there's lots of good things uh, going to happen for that this afternoon. So hope you'll join us. Also, um, coming up, Ascension Day service. We're going to host it here this year. And uh, the folks from St. Matthew's will be joining us. And Pastor Paul, my husband, but the pastor also at St. Matthew, is going to be preaching. Um, after worship, we'll have that uh, root beer float uh, time uh, after Ascension worship. So uh, mark your calendars for that. There's other things coming up, other things to um, notice. Um, please check the insert in your bulletin today. Um, there's a cancer prayer and support group going to be starting in a couple weeks, community game night this Friday, all sorts of things. So check those out. How about birthdays and celebrations this week? I know Carol Moe is having a birthday today. So happy birthday, Carol. Um, anyone, yes? Levi's Oh, congratulations, Levi. Happy birthday, big double digits, yes? Thursday, birthday on Thursday. Uh, we, won't, we won't talk about numbers, no, 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 but still. Congratulations. I think you have a birthday this week, too. Amy Chamley has a birthday, because I think you guys share a birthday. I'll be 12. You'll be 12. <laughs> okay. 12. Does that make your daughter a little cringy? Yeah. <laughs> and Jason just had a birthday. Yes. Well, happy birthday, Jason. Yes. We didn't mention that last week. Oh. Oh, well, good things all. All of those things are wonderful. All right, well, at this point, we are going to um, bless our church musicians. So I am going to invite all of our musicians, all of our choir members, um, our choir director, our organist, our cantors, everybody um, to come forward. So 
Um, that includes Linda and Julia and Larissa, the choir, the bell choir, the cantors, our other musicians, all of them, come on up. While you're coming, um, a fun another quote from Luther. I have no use for cranks who despise music because it is a gift of God. Music drives away the devil and makes the people joyful. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let us, let us pray. O oh God of majesty, saints and angels delight in worshiping you. We give you thanks for the musicians of our congregation who lead our praise and worship each week. Pour out your spirit on Linda and Julia and Larissa, our cantors and choir, our bell choir and bass player, our flutists and pianists and cellists, and, and on all your servants who with the gifts of music enliven our praises and proclaim your word with power. Bless them in their work. Bless them as they guide our breath into one and help us let it out in beautiful song. Bless each pitch and note as it rises and falls with our communal joys and sorrows. Bless the ringing and the singing, the rhythms and the melodies that unite us and lift us. And through it all, give us new awareness of your beauty and grace as we join our voices with all the choirs of heaven, both now and forever. This we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And let all God's children say, Amen. 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 Will you thank these musicians who work every single week? Turn around. Let them thank you. <laughs> um, uh, a final uh, quote from Martin Luther there, um, as uh, before our benediction. A person who does not regard music as a marvelous creation of God must be a clodhopper indeed. He should be permitted to hear nothing but the braying of asses and the grunting of hogs. <laughs> Will you stand for the benediction? <laughs> the God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. We're singing, My Life Goes On in Endless Song, number 763.